Welcome to the Good Growing Podcast. I am Chris Enroth, and we have got a Garden Bite episode for you this week. Spring is the time when things start to get a little snaky in the garden, isn't that right? Well, today we are pulling a clip from our interview with Dr. John Venek last year when we were talking all about snakes. In this clip, we uh, discuss what are some of the ways that we can attract snakes to our yard and maybe what are some of the benefits or things that they can offer to us gardeners. So if you're an outlier like me or or you, (laughs) well, what can we do to encourage snakes in our yard? Yeah, so the the opposite of that, right? So you're going to want to maybe turn your lawn into a a native planting. Um, you You can strategically place debris that your neighbors won't like, <laughs> or, or, you know, you, you can kind of foster connectivity to, to natural areas. If you're in the position to do that, you know, if your property abuts to a na- natural area or you have a, a, a group of like-minded neighbors, you can try to try to do that. Um, a lot of people will ask, you know, well, can I, can I bring these beneficial species and put them in my yard? Uh, and that really doesn't work so well. Snakes have a, a pretty well-defined home range. And once you move them out of that, they're going to try to get back to where they came from. And if that means crossing a road, that means they're, they're going to cross that road the opposite way and uh, try to get home and are, they're going to get smashed by a car. Um, so people ask, well, you know, can I bring king snakes into my yard? Because king snakes like to eat other species of snakes, including rattlesnakes and cotton mount, or copperheads. Um, but again, that's, it's, they're not going to stay in your yard. They're going to try to get back home. Um, you can certainly you know, probably one of the best things you can do is to try to, uh, help your neighbors have an appreciation for snakes. So at least they're not killing them. Maybe they call you instead, and then you can, uh, come and remove them. So there, there are two species that I always like to tell people are, are the friend of the gardener. And I feel people on this show might appreciate that. So they're, um, these small species they are, they've only get about 15, 18 inches long. Uh, and one of them is the, the brown snake. Um, and this is a species that loves to eat slugs. And so they eat worms and slugs. And so uh, I always tell people when I'm doing education programs, if you find a brown snake in your garden, you know, that's, you know, that's what you want there because you're, you're, what is it? Is it zucchinis and things that like that slugs like to eat? Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So brown snakes are great to encourage in your backyard by, you know, putting some logs, you know, developing those connected areas. Um, and the other species is the red bellied snake which also only gets about 15 inches long. It has a bright red belly, um, about the width of a pencil, and that eats slugs and snails. They'll actually pull snails right out of their shell. Um, And so if you have either of those species in your backyard, you know, those are things you certainly don't want to kill. I I mean, I endorse never killing a snake, (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. but but I'm a practical person, and I realize that not everyone is going to share that sentiment. Um, But so you should be proud and you should brag to your gardening groups that you have red bellied snakes and brown snakes in your (laughs) garden, um, because they're going to be fighting those slugs and snails right alongside with you. They're in the trenches. Um, And a lot of the other species, you know, I I have small kids, so I wouldn't necessarily want a copperhead hanging out in my yard. And so if, if that was the situation, I would, I would take measures, including fencing and keeping my yard up to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, But if I saw one, Uh, you know, I'm a trained expert. I've worked professionally with venomous species. I would move it to the outskirts of my property. And I, you know, I'd have a talk with my kids about how we don't pick up snakes and approach them without a grown up. And I'd go for that angle. Um, if you kill that copperhead, you've removed the immediate threat perhaps, but if you have a copperhead in your yard, that means there's a population of copperheads in your immediate area. And so removing one hasn't really done anything other than make you feel better. Uh, temporarily. Uh, and, but most of the other species are great to have also, if you have garter snakes, you know, they might take small rodents. If you have any of the black snakes, which is a common name people use for rat snakes and racers, um, those species love to eat mice and voles. Um, king snakes love to eat voles and, um, uh, lots, lots of our larger species, the prairie king snakes and our fox snakes, they're all great rodent eaters. And, you know, if a snake is eating a rodent a week, that's a, that's a, for a single snake, that's a big difference when you think about the reproductive potential of these rodent species. Um, and so I, I would always say snakes are great to have in your garden, um, you know, and, and maybe do what you can to, to minimize the chance you have a venomous species in your backyard. But 
that's not too common unless you're in extreme Southern Illinois. Well, that was some interesting information about ways that we can attract snakes and some of the benefits that they provide to our gardens. If you want to watch the interview in full, we will leave a link below in the description. Listeners, thank you. Do what you do best, and that is listening. Or if you watch this clip on YouTube, watching. And as always, keep on growing.